Today, I will present to you quite a challenging campaign where I'll be playing as Greece in Victoria 3, and my goal will be to restore Byzantium. This means I'll have to defeat my stronger neighbor. Although the Ottoman Empire is struggling with many socio-economic problems, it is still a country far more powerful than Greece, literally in every aspect. To handle this challenge, I'll need to find allies. Maybe Austria, maybe Russia, or perhaps the United Kingdom. These countries, of course, are global powers, which might make them very reluctant to form an alliance with me. That's why I might have to give up part of my sovereignty and join one of the power blocks. Or maybe I'll organize the Olympic Games, which would boost Greece's prestige on the international stage. Who knows how this story will unfold? Welcome, imperialists, Lucas here. Fortunately for the Greeks, and for my campaign, it turned out that I started with a lobby already favorable toward major powers like the United Kingdom, Russia and France. I was a little disappointed there wasn't a pro-Austrian lobby. On the diplomatic map, I reviewed the Ottoman Empire's relations with neighboring countries. It just so happens they don't get along with Russia, and from what I can see, it's mutual. And since I already had a pro-Russian lobby, I designated the Ottoman Empire as my rival and immediately began improving diplomatic relations with Russia. I could already form a defensive pact but it's not worth using favors for that. I'll be the aggressor here anyway. I was also very close to signing a trade agreement with the Russians, so I started importing and exporting anything that was profitable, and secondarily anything with minimal losses. Soon after, I could sign the trade agreement, which was a huge success. As an additional bonus, I regained all of my bureaucracy points. I'll also work on improving relations with the Austrians and the British, which will come in handy later. And let's not forget about the Ionian Islands. This is tied to a journal entry where I can annex the Ionian Islands, but first, I had to research nationalism. Unfortunately, I had a long way to go to reach that, because Greece is incredibly backward. So I had to research all the Tier 1 sociology texts to avoid penalties when developing Tier 2 nationalism. There were a lot of these texts. Another very important event in the Journal for Greece is the restoration of the Olympic Games, which would permanently grant Greece 100 prestige points, an enormous number. Greece would have as much prestige as the world's greatest powers. Nationalism is also needed to fulfill a very important agenda for the Greek state, tied to a crucial Greek event, but more on that later. For now, I also want to minimize the number of radicals, so I lower taxes as much as possible. I'll only impose consumption taxes on tobacco and services. You might be tempted to cut government spending, but I advise leaving it as is. Greece is made up of three really poor regions, at least at the start, so I don't have much to do here. I also issue road maintenance decrees, which, as you know, speed up construction. In the capital, I start by building one tool factory, then I'll build sawmills there. I can forget about steel mills, because we simply don't have coal. For now, Russia has a protective attitude toward me, though I won't take advantage of it, as I just realized I owe Russia a favor from the very start of the game. Meanwhile, the Turks' attitude toward me has shifted, they now want to subjugate Greece. Yes, Things are about to get interesting. I reorganize my battalions, combining them into one army and adding conscripts to it, or rather, one conscript. In the government, I bring in as many factions as possible, the more the better, politically speaking. I'm not planning to meddle too much in Greek politics for now, though from what I can see, it might be a good idea to include the peasants or the intelligentsia, because I really care about enforcing racial segregation. For now, Greece only has one culture, but that could change soon. I really do have 100% Greeks in Greece. As for the commanders, I definitely wasn't lucky. I could use some good defenders, but I ended up with commanders specialized in open terrain in Greece. After two months, Russia gave me a guarantee of independence, so I no longer had anything to fear, right? Unfortunately, I also had to tinker with my budget a bit since it was shrinking before my eyes, unlike the number of radicals. And after a while, I was able to demand territory from the Egyptian authorities. Nothing like angering the only country that could also help me in a war against the Ottomans. In January 1837, the peace period with the Ottoman Empire ended, and I could see if any country would support me in a war against the Turks. Unfortunately, none did. A lot in Victoria depends on luck, which I had to some extent because Russia signed a defensive pact with me. So now I had a growing chance that lobbyists would soon force me into an alliance with Russia. But since I was only a few points short of convincing Russia to support me in this war, I decided to take the risk and demanded the return of my territories from the Ottoman Empire. Yes, barely, but I succeeded. I'll likely convince Russia, but I don't want to become their protectorate. I'd rather conquer something for them. The cheaper, the better. Thanks to this, Russia joined the war on my side and the Ottoman Empire was no longer so confident of victory. I still had more points to use, so I added war representatives 
operations to the war goals against the Ottoman Empire, as AI bots have been retreating from wars quite often recently. I also demanded Macedonia, as many Greeks live there. I mobilized my army and sent it to the front, though let's be honest, they wouldn't achieve much. I ordered all my commanders to defend the front lines. I got lucky in the end, a commander with a defensive attitude appeared. The Ottoman attitude changed to terrified when Russian forces reached their borders. And indeed, Russian troops also arrived at my border with the Ottoman Empire. They're here. The question is, will they leave after the war? If you want peace, prepare for war. I suppose before the war. Thanks to this, I gained the support of my militarists, and then the war broke out. To be honest, without Russia's help, I'd already be finished. One defensive battle was enough to wipe out most of my army. And Greece is so backward that it doesn't even have an edict to increase conscription. Russian forces broke through the Turkish defenses and pushed toward the capital. Russia also demanded that I join its power block. And they're asking this in exchange for a favor. This was a really tough decision. If I refused Russia, it would have a lot of negative consequences. So I decided, at least temporarily, to be part of Russia's sphere of influence. But unfortunately, this block didn't offer me any cool bonuses. I didn't even join their market. The Ottoman Empire had no chance in this war clearly, and the war ended with the Turks' capitulation. I gained a lot of territories and money from them, and I'll invest all of it in developing my country. Because of course, I wanted to integrate the conquered lands into my territory, and thanks to the Turks, I was able to lower the tax burden on the Greeks. I also tried to implement a dedicated police force, but unfortunately, I had no luck there. Meanwhile, an anti-Egyptian coalition was growing in my parliament. It was funny that conquering those two provinces essentially tripled my country's GDP. Two years later, I managed to form an alliance with the Russian Empire. Granted, it was in exchange for a favor, but it meant I would have support in the next war with the Turks, and they seem to be having tough times now because Egypt has attacked them. Alright, now that I've reclaimed the first territories from the Ottoman Empire and secured Russia as my loyal ally, I'll make good use of that alliance and fulfill the demands of my political lobby. The lobby wants me to declare war on Egypt and try to conquer Crete. In the meantime, I introduced a law that strengthens the farmers in my country. These may not have an immediate impact, but in the long run, it will allow me to bring them into the government. Once they are in power, I'll be able to introduce racial segregation in the country, as my nation now consists of many cultures that should be accepted. From Egypt, I only demanded Crete. The Russian fleet helped me capture it, though I was hoping that Egypt would surrender it peacefully. Crete is mine, and since I have very little infamy around the world, Greece can now begin some military actions. I have three ships, so I need to find countries with really small armies. In South America, even the smaller countries are too strong. Even Uruguay. In the Gold Valley, Orange is weak and I could conquer it, but I'd have to fight through either Zulu or Transvaal, so no. Oh, but here in the Ethiopian region, there are a few weaker countries, or in Arabia, where I could start with a country that has no army at all, I declare an interest. I'll conquer that territory for myself, because otherwise I'd be establishing protectorates, and they provide much less tribute income. Landing, I assign my tiny fleet and small army. The war is practically won immediately, but I continue to attack, planning to conquer a few countries and then release them as my vassals. In the end, I release three small countries, which collectively provide me with 700 gold in additional income. Now, I've launched an attack on the Ethiopian region. To be honest, something has changed with wars, because now, when I completely defeat an opponent who has no chance, I don't have to wait for war support to drop to zero. I just win the war right away. Oops, I can't release smaller vassals, uh, here, I have to create the entire Ethiopia. So, I decided to attack larger countries here, aiming to conquer Gondor. There it is. It was good timing, because meanwhile, I had also researched line infantry, and now I'm heading towards the Napoleonic War Doctrine. Fortunately, my opponent's armies aren't well equipped enough to stop my Greek offensive in the region. And there it is. Nationalism. This means the birth of an independent Greek state. The rise of nationalism has created an irredentist desire among our citizens to incorporate all the lands of the Greek people under a single Greek state. I definitely want that territory. It turned out I didn't even need to conquer the entire Gondor region, I could release Ethiopia now, which I did. I'm curious to see how my future conquests for this country will unfold. Ethiopia immediately provided me with 1,200 extra income, solving many of my country's budget problems. I also handed over Somaliland to Ethiopia, as I didn't want that territory for myself. Unfortunately, I've gained too much infamy, so I need to wait a bit. Three years. In the meantime, I'll focus on reclaiming the Ionian Islands. That went smoothly, as I have excellent relations with both Great Britain and the Ionian Islands. Now my Greece is annexing that territory. The rise and expansion of the Greek state have led the nationalists to an even grander idea, the restoration of the Byzantine Empire. I can now make further territorial claims, which will upset quite a few countries. In fact, all of them on this list. 
I'm not sure what Mexico has to do with this. I can gain 100 prestige points, which is a massive amount, but unfortunately only for 9 years, or I can abandon these claims and have the entire Greek population move to my country. Ok, I know which path I'll choose, however, I'm really curious about this decision, so let me save the game and check how much population I'd get. I currently have just over 3 million, and after clicking the decision, over 4 million. I must say, if I wanted to play a tall game, this would be very profitable, but I'll ultimately follow the path of restoring the Byzantine Empire. Now, I just have to wait for a long time for my infamy to decrease. I'll use this time to improve relations with most of the nearby powers. Although, let's not overdo it, I'll take it step by step. I want to get the biggest diplomatic bonus possible from having a large amount of influence. I also enacted a racial segregation law, which made a few more cultures acceptable. However, the Turkish culture is still not accepted. Oh, how nice the Ottoman Empire is going through a civil war. Honestly, I'll try to take advantage of this as an opportunity to seize my national territories. Since they are in a civil war, look, I have an empty border with the Ottoman Empire. So I've set a route for my army straight to their capital. I managed to capture the Ottoman capital. Fantastic! It really was a good moment to attack, absolutely the right moment. I reclaimed many territories for Greece, plus war reparations from the Ottoman Empire. Why am I losing so much money though? What's going on? Ah, bureaucracy. Now I really need to slow down on the conquests. Because look, having this much infamy causes me to get significantly more radicals in my country. And right now, I already have a lot of them. The Ottoman Empire lost its civil war. But what I'm wondering is whether this new Ottoman Empire still pays me war reparations. Sadly, it seems like they don't. On the plus side, I don't have a truce period with this new Ottoman Empire. Nonetheless, at this point, my Greece has really grown quite large. Now, all that remains is to continue my conquests toward the creation of Byzantium. And there are still plenty of conquests ahead of me. In the meantime, I'll focus on improving my economic conditions. And besides that, I need to increase the capabilities of my construction sector. Unfortunately, I was attacked by Egypt, but fortunately, with Russia's help, I don't think I'm in any real danger. Russia easily conquered Hejaz, I took advantage of the moment when the Russian army blocked most of the Egyptian army in Lower Egypt and deployed my army in Libya, luckily. The Russians soon joined me, which will probably help push the front forward, and the Egyptian forces stand no chance against us. I have to admit, winning the war with Egypt has now given me such a cash boost that I've even reduced taxes. I also managed to develop the social technology of organized sports, which means it's time to revive the Olympic Games. This immediately made me one of the greatest powers in the world, alongside countries like Sweden and Spain. Prussia has doubled the score, but still, I find it kind of amusing. In fact, my tiny Greece has more prestige than mighty China. And with the decline of infamy worldwide, it has become possible to continue my wars against the Ottoman Empire. Of course, I was only reclaiming my territories. This area is also important for another reason. It contains coal, which will push my entire economy forward. But before that, I'll expand my army. This time, I had to divide my army into two fronts, one to defend Constantinople and the other to attack Bulgaria, or rather, the Balkans. I must admit, the assault on the Anatolian front was supported by Russia. It seems like the Ottoman Empire was also attacked by Great Britain in the meantime. Interesting. And thanks to that, I easily won the war. Greece has grown, but more importantly, I now finally have access to coal, which I must put to use immediately. Looking at the exhaustion of my army, I suffered huge losses. I'm also curious about how assimilation will affect these territories, so I decided to promote national values everywhere that Turks have the upper hand. I'm also building my first steel mill. After losing the war with me, the Ottoman Empire fell into another revolution, this time led by the militarists. And my economy, now that I have access to coal, is growing like crazy. On my market, aside from valuable materials, there's also a shortage of basic goods, so it's time for Greek colonization. And Greece itself is on the road to progress. Wait a second, why did I suddenly join the Russian market? Well, I might as well make use of it now, I don't get it. After the latest revolt, the Ottoman Empire seems much weaker even compared to me. And what's even better is that, as with every previous revolt, there's no peace period between us. Austro-Hungary has also emerged. I'm hoping they'll soon clash with Prussia over the unification of Germany, because currently there's a risk they might support the Ottoman Empire in a war. I declared war on the Ottoman Empire, but it turned out they handed me Albania for free. How nice of them, which of course I annexed into my territory. So now I'm only missing two provinces. Maybe next time I'll grab both, but in four years. To solve my country's debt problem, I decided to privatize a few factories and other assets. I also seized the opportunity to invade Zululand. At this point, Great Britain seems less inclined to defend that territory. Unfortunately, Oman sided with the enemy. However, I think Ethiopia's army will handle that. I must say, privatization has paid off immensely. My coffers are nearly full at this point, and GDP is rising. 
The wars with Zululand are quite easy to win. As soon as my troops land, I immediately achieve victory. I've also stopped the assimilation efforts. It's completely pointless. I have fewer Greeks now than before. I won't incorporate these new territories in Zululand into my empire for a very simple reason. Since they're not officially part of my territory, I get increased productivity for basic goods. So I don't want factories here, but I definitely want more lumber yards, coal mines and plantations. But what I really want is to conquer the gold mines in Orange. Thanks to this, I can even expand my Greek colonies here. I'll have better chances of finding more gold fields, which I can turn into gold mines. The edicts that are worth enabling here include, of course, violent suppression of rebellions and increased extraction, giving me a 47% boost in this region. Now, I need to hold off on my wars to reduce my infamy as quickly as possible. Low taxes keep reducing the number of radicals. Slowly but surely, but it's progress. Besides, the radical parties are generating very little influence, while loyalists are working diligently. And check it out, from this gold-rich province I'm getting 11,000 in pure income. Maybe it's not much, but still something considering I'm usually making between 2 and 10,000 profit. Because of this, I can continue maintaining really low tax rates for the Greeks. I'm now expanding my army. And for a moment I thought Austria and Russia were at war, but thankfully not. Well, yes, but it's a war over Serbia. It kind of makes me laugh when Greece's GDP is better than that of the United States. Although, to be fair, things aren't going great for them. I just declared war on the Ottoman Empire, and it's possible that this time I'll be fighting them solo. Though Egypt, Sardinia Piedmont, the two Sicilies and Persia will side against me. We'll see if these countries withdraw their support. Maybe Great Britain and Austria will back out as well. Otherwise, I'm a bit hesitant to call on the Russians for help in this war. Over time, fewer and fewer countries have supported the Ottoman Empire. Yes, Austria has backed out. I'll approach the war strategically by defending first. If I gain an advantage on the front or exhaust the Ottoman Empire's allies, then I'll go on the offensive. And now the war has begun. Sardinian troops practically cease to exist after one battle, so I am positioning my armies and attacking. It's a pretty large scale war overall, but on the Balkans front I was definitely winning, pushing back both Sardinian and Ottoman forces. I held the Anatolian front, and from what I can see, I don't yet have enough advantage to launch an offensive here. The Ottoman forces are fleeing the Balkans, which I've completely taken over. And even when these armies arrived in Anatolia, my reinforcements did too, so I've peleveractically gained a 100% advantage over the enemy. Yes, the Ottomans are retreating, I'm winning on every front. Thanks to this war, I conquered a lot of territory. Most importantly, I've become one of the world's greatest powers. But even better, now I can form the Byzantine Empire, which I immediately do. So, with the formation of Byzantium will I be able to reach further and reclaim the legacy of the Roman Empire? Let me know in the comments. And if you're still craving more, I recommend this episode where I restored the legacy of Lotharingia, acquiring tons of territories for free all while starting the game as Burgundy. 